Let's study another very interesting sorting algorithm called shell sort after the name of its inventor Donald Shell. This algorithm is an improved insertion sort algorithm but it can also be applied to bubble sort but we will keep our discussion to the insertion sort which is the main line. This algorithm works very well for medium sized arrays having elements up to a few thousands. Donald Shell saw a problem with the insertion sort algorithm and tried to fix it in his shell sort algorithm. And what is that problem? Well, if you recall, in case of insertion sort algorithm, we had to move a lot of elements to make place for the new element to be inserted in the sorted part of the array. And for large arrays, there would be a lot of element jumps. Especially when we near the end of the array and the elements there are small. To understand, consider this example. We have this array and we start doing insertion sort on this and after some iterations, we are in this state. So the left part of the array is sorted and now we come to the element 10 which will get inserted here in the sorted part, right? And to make space for this element, all these elements will have to move to the right. So that when this step is done, the array looks like this. And now the next element 9 is to be inserted at the right place. So most of the time is taken in moving the small elements to the beginning of the array, the jumps that they do. Because essentially one such jump amounts to a whole bunch of elements moving to adjacent slots. So Donald Shell came up with a very innovative approach to solve this problem. And the intuition is that instead of trying to sort the whole array, we sort a part of the array, say every fifth element, and pretend that other elements do not exist. For example, in this array, we can just sort 25, 19 and 9. And after we are done, the data in the array looks like this. All right. And then we move to the next element. So now we can choose elements at index 1, 5 and 9 and pretend that other elements of the array do not exist and just sort these three elements. So after sorting the array would look like this. Then we move to the next set of elements that is elements at index 2 and 6. So we keep the same gap between the elements and after sorting each set we move the index by 1. So now our first pass is over and this is how the array looks like after the first pass. But as you can see the array is not completely sorted. So in the next pass we again start from element at index 0. But this time we reduce the gap between the elements. And we keep doing that until the gap between the elements is reduced to 1 which means that we will be sorting each element of the array. But the advantage would be that by that time, if there are smaller numbers towards the end of the array, they would have jumped to the starting of the array and the larger ones would have moved to the end of the array. And that is advantageous because if the elements had to travel more distance within the array, they could do it in much lesser jumps. So that would be faster. And how do we choose the gap or interval between the elements? Well, we do that by using what is called as the Nuth sequence, which was formulated by Donald Nuth. And the number deciding what interval to use can be found by this recursive expression. So we would start by choosing the value of h as 1. And then the next value of h will be 4. And then 13, then 40, then 121 all the way up to a point where h is less than the length of the array. Because if we choose the interval to be more than the length of the array, the first element will be of course at index 0 and then the next element will not be within the array, right? Moreover, these intervals are chosen in the reverse order and that is important to understand. We want the gaps or intervals to be large initially so that elements may quickly move across the array if they need to. And then we choose smaller and smaller intervals until we choose the value of h or the interval to be 1, which would be a regular sorting of the array. 
but by this time the array would have already been sorted to a great extent. So if we have 100 elements in an array, the interval chosen for the first iteration will be 40 because according to NUT sequence, we cannot use 121, right? That would not make sense. In the next iteration, we would choose an interval of 13, then 4, and finally 1. Let's understand with the help of an example. 